On today's Winning Cures Everything, we got a preview week number seven. That's right, we got a lot to talk about. Who are the biggest brand games this weekend? Where's game day going for week eight? Uh, what else have we got? Most likely underdog outright winners. We got a ton to talk about. And we got some early game previews for the midweek games this week. Let's not waste time. Let's get to it. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. It is the Monday, October 9th edition of the show. A little bit earlier than usual. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. Of course, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at GaryWCE. I am on uh, Twitter at Winning Cures. So go and check that out. I'm appealing all the time. We're going to get at GaryWCE back on Twitter. I promise. Eventually. They will hear my cries. Eventually. All right, if you want to support the show, you can go over to buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. I will be posting numbers over there uh, throughout the remainder of the football season. You guys that have already uh, already donated or whatever it's called over there, I appreciate you. Thank you for buying me a beer. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, you can check out all of my plays, et cetera, by following my group over on Telegram. Uh, it's t.me slash GaryWCE. If you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, go on Telegram. You can follow me, Gary WCE. I give you the stuff that I am playing every single week. I'll tell you the number that I got it at, what I like it to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, of course, the Bet US College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday. That's right, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure that you are joined up over there, that you are subscribed, that you like all those videos. We go through quite a bit of them. I cover a bunch of games over there, and then I come back and I cover a bunch of games over here. So... We, I try and get as many of the games covered as humanly possible. Give you my thoughts on those games. So, that is what we try and do with that channel. Um, no, that's not what we try and do. We, we do a good job. We do full deep dives on the BetUS channel. I do quick stuff over here. <laughs> so, uh, along with that, Three Dog Thursday comes out on this channel every single Thursday. Uh, and it should be around 2 p.m. Central Time. So... Mark your calendars. That way you can join TJ Reeves and whoever it is that he gets with him. Um, it was just too much for me to be able to do it all at one time. So uh, be on the lookout. Three Dog Thursday. Okay, now we'll start off with this. Where is college game day going for week number eight? That is the question. And I, I think there's only one real option here. Now I'm going to give you two other ones. Utah at USC. If USC goes into South Bend and gets a win, okay, maybe, right? It, Utah has a and not a big game against Cal this weekend. They are expected to win. They're almost two touchdown favorites. We'll see if Cam Rising comes back. Obviously, there is some intrigue with Utah at USC, especially if Cam Rising is back. Tennessee at Alabama is interesting, right? It, the issue there is that, hey, you've already got you know, two teams with a loss. Can Tennessee beat Texas A&M at home this weekend? They can. Will they? We'll see. Alabama's also got Arkansas. If both of those get through, uh, then maybe that one, because that will be, you know, a top 15 matchup, I guess. Maybe top, I guess it'd be top 20. Alabama will be in the top 10. Um, not sure where Tennessee is right now, to be completely honest. I don't pay attention to rankings. I know that. <laughs> um where they're going to go is Penn State at Ohio State. It's it's the big noon kick on Fox and whatnot. Doesn't matter. That is the biggest game on the board. It's a top six matchup. Uh, it looks like it's whoever wins this will be in line to battle with Michigan for the Big Ten East championship. Right, the last year of divisions in that conference. We shall see. I think it's going to be a fascinating game. Uh, Ohio State does not look great. I think that's where they're going to go. I don't know that there's another chance that ESPN is going to get to go to Columbus this year. And it's one of the places that they try and go every year. They try and go to Tuscaloosa every year. They try and go to Columbus every year. You know, that's that's what I'm taking away from it. Um, and I think they try and go to South Bend every year, too. But they already did that. So, <laughs> uh, so yes, Penn State at Ohio State is the pick for me. Uh, I would imagine that's what they're going to knock out. So, 
All right. The week seven preview. It is time to dive into it. We'll start with this. Who is, uh, who's going to get the highest ratings this week? What are the biggest brand games? And I think it's pretty easy. USC at Notre Dame, I think, is going to get the highest ratings. It's on NBC. It's a primetime matchup. I think that those two brands are going to bring in the highest number this week. That is, of course, if it ends up being a pretty tight game, which I think it will be. I think it'll be pretty tight. Uh, the next one on the board, Oregon at Washington, is on ABC. Now, these are big brands. They're not huge brands, right? It's it's not Notre Dame. It's not uh, USC, right? So Oregon, Washington, two undefeated teams, both top 10 teams. That one's going to do a pretty big number on ABC. I would imagine you probably get over $4 million to watch that one. Um, on average, they have not been getting to $4 million between those two, but this is a different circumstance this year. Uh, competing with that in that 2.30 p.m. Central Time slot, Texas A&M at Tennessee. That's two big brands. That's going to probably do over $4 million as well. That's my guess. So over $4 million for that. I think the primetime ABC game could be interesting. Miami UNC. Uh, that's two brands that... You see me scratching my nose if you're watching on YouTube. I apologize. <laughs> the uh, the allergy stuff is real. Okay, we we were at 90 degrees last week, and we hit below 60 last night. So it is really messing with me. Really messing with me. Uh, this is a good time to tell you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> we would appreciate that. Uh, we're trying to get 10,000 over here. We're less than 300 away, so that would help. Uh, Miami, North Carolina, I think probably going to do... Over three million for sure, uh, but maybe not much more than that. Miami's loss last week certainly hurt. Uh, this would have been a battle of two undefeated teams it had it not been for the gross negligence that Mario Cristobal exhibited uh, as a head coach last week. Arkansas at Alabama, I've got as number five here. That's a noon Eastern time game on ESPN. I'm only putting that because I think that the score is going to be somewhat tight. It's going to seem like that game is in doubt later. Uh, than maybe some of these other ones. So, uh, Arkansas at Alabama, I imagine, does over three. Iowa at Wisconsin on Fox. That one's uh, an afternoon game, 3 p.m. Central Time. Two big, you know, two bigger Big Ten brands. I think that's going to be pretty big. So, I would imagine that that one's going to do some numbers. And then uh, the Fox, big noon kick. Always does good numbers. Indiana at Michigan. Michigan, a massive brand. People are going to want to tune in and see exactly what's going on with them. So, that's what I think is going to go on there. The most exciting games, or what games are going to be closest this weekend, I got quite a few. Marshall at Georgia State. I can't get a read on this thing. Uh, Marshall, typically, their defense is really good against the run, etc. The issue is, uh, while on a down-to-down basis, they're pretty good against the run, they are the worst team in FBS at giving up explosive runs. So that's definitely not good. Uh, Georgia State can run the ball. They're really good at it. Darren Granger, the uh, the quarterback, he got some legs on him. So, yeah, that's kind of an issue. Kind of an issue. Georgia Southern at James Madison, I think, could be very interesting. Uh, Davis Brin in that offense has been fantastic, aside from the turnovers. If he doesn't have turnovers in this game, this thing's going to be super, super tight. If he does, I mean, James Madison can certainly run away with it, but... Regardless, Oregon at Washington, I think, could be very interesting. I'm wary on that because of, you know, Roadbo. Uh, although he's been a lot better at Oregon. So we'll see what ends up happening there. But, uh, but Bo Nix, you know, Bo Nix and Michael Penix, this was a just a riveting ball game last year. So, yeah, really, really good there. Uh, A&M at Tennessee. Texas A&M can't afford another loss. Tennessee, they, they can't really afford one either, but... Regardless, A&M's already got two of them. So uh, that one, I think there's going to be a lot of suspense with that. Uh, Notre Dame and USC, again, I think going to be a pretty tight ball game. Which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose in Week 7? Uh, Fresno going to Utah State. Look, Fresno went to Wyoming, and uh, Laramie is a house of horrors, right? It, you can put... You can put Laramie, Wyoming next to Corvallis, next to Pullman, Washington, all those kind of things where you go in expecting to win and 
it's just always difficult to play there, right? So Fresno loses at Wyoming last week. Now you got to go to Utah State, who has really picked it up here lately. They have looked a lot better. They got that big win last week over Colorado State. They went down 17 to nothing in the first quarter and won the game 44 to 24. So, yeah, that's that one's going to be tough for Fresno if they want to win the Mountain West. You got to get this one. You got to get this one. Uh, Oregon and Washington, obviously, most of the game, most of, I, I would imagine, whoever loses this still going to have a chance to get to the Pac-10 or Pac-12 championship game. But regardless, uh, Texas A&M and Tennessee, we just talked about that one. A&M, massive spot. Massive spot. They cannot afford another loss. Another one would put them at three losses already on the season, which is great. That's a good football team, and the schedule is just brutal. Uh, Miami at North Carolina. Miami took that loss to Georgia Tech last week. Cannot afford another one. If they want to compete in the ACC, you got to get this win at North Carolina, and they've not been good against North Carolina. They really haven't. Um... Yeah, that's just the way it goes. Let's talk about the most likely underdog outright winners. So outright upsets for underdogs this week. Who have we got a chance to hit with? Hawaii is a five and a half point underdog at home to San Diego State. The five factors rankings would have Hawaii favored in this ballgame. Now, there's other things at play. What San Diego State does best on offense happens to be what Hawaii is the worst at on defense. What Hawaii is best at on offense is actually what San Diego State does well on defense. So that's a bit of an issue. But either way, five factors would have Hawaii favored. BYU and TCU. I've got BYU as an outright favorite in this game, and they are a five-point underdog at opening. Okay. Like, this is very interesting. Uh, Texas A&M, they are an underdog by three points in Knoxville. I think they should be favored. But, again, that's a really difficult place to go play. I've got home field baked in, and I still have A&M favored by, like, a point and a half. So, we'll see. Uh, Duke is favored over NC State. But without Riley Leonard, do we really know what this team is? Like, there's, I think there's a chance that Riley Leonard plays. They said it was a high ankle sprain. Uh, he had the bye week. Maybe he plays, but, like, is he going to be 100%? Like, is he going to be able to use his wheels? Like, NC State might have found something with MJ Morris. I mean, they put up 48 points on Marshall last week. And, you know, Mike Elko's defense is going to have something for them. Like, But MJ Morris looked good. So, I think NC State could win that game outright. Uh, now, let's talk about the G5 games of the week Wyoming heading to Air Force typically you don't put a game that is a 10 point spread on here but this has all kinds of Mountain West implications right Wyoming they they're still undefeated in Mountain West play Air Force obviously undefeated in Mountain West play Air Force has been fantastic Wyoming coming off of a huge win at home against Fresno last week that's a that's a pretty big spot Marshall and Georgia State we talked about that one earlier. I think it's going to be super tight. Super tight game. I, I don't know which way to go on that one. Uh, Georgia Southern and James Madison. We talked about that one as well. Uh, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tulane at Memphis on Friday night. Potential AAC championship preview. Potentially. we got to talk about SMU here. But, uh, but yeah, that one at the Liberty Bowl on Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be... That's going to be a big one. Uh, and then finally, I brought up Fresno at Utah State. That's a pretty big spot. Utah State has been looking a lot better here lately. So, yes, that is the way it goes. Let's move to the college football viewing guide for week number seven. And da, 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 we're going to bring up the, uh, the screen here so you can see what we're looking at. And on this, okay, so let's start off with this. Tuesday night, we got uh, CUSA action and some Sun Belt. Louisiana Tech at Middle Tennessee on CBS Sports Network. That's where I'm, I'm going to be watching some of that. My main TV is going to have Liberty at Jacksonville State. You got a, uh, an undefeated Liberty team and a one-loss Jacksonville State. Yeah, I'm in. Count me in. Count me in. Wednesday, oh, we do have Coastal at uh, App State. 
I don't know what to think about those two teams. It's a fun brand matchup as far as G5s go, but regardless. Uh, Wednesday, we got UTEP at FIU, and we got Sam Houston at New Mexico State. I'm going to be watching uh, Sam Houston at New Mexico State. I want to see if Sam Houston has gotten their offense right, uh, because I think that New Mexico State is rolling now. I think they're rolling, and and they're at home in Las Cruces. This I think that's going to be fun. Thursday, it's not an anxiety bowl, but... Eh, we'll see. West Virginia at Houston. Neil Brown has done amazing things with that program thus far this season. Houston has not looked good. However, this is the Dana Holgerson Bowl. Like, do you not think that Houston's head coach, Holgerson, is going to have something for his former team? Uh, we'll see. Who Who's more irritated in that situation? Uh, SMU battling East Carolina. Yeah, uh, that could be interesting. East Carolina's not been very good thus far, uh, but SMU has been a little less than advertised. I will say that they have not been very, they have not been very good, and so we'll we'll see what that one ends up meaning, because uh, SMU going on the road there, that's a big deal. All right, Friday you got Tulane at Memphis, brought that up. Fresno at Utah State, and then Stanford at Colorado. Uh, yeah, I mean Colorado got a chance to hit all of those win total overs this week, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, we move to Saturday. Eh, there's not a whole lot in that early slate. I think Alabama-Arkansas may be going to be the most interesting. Uh, Georgia Southern at James Madison is the most interesting from a G5 perspective. If you want brands, you know, you got all the big brands playing. Georgia is playing on CBS. Michigan's on Fox. Ohio State's on Peacock, so you need your streamer for that. Alabama's on ESPN. Florida State's on ABC. Yeah, you got big brands all over the place, but none of them are expected to be competitive. So, eh, you know, put put Alabama and Arkansas on one screen, Georgia Southern, James Madison on the other. You should be all right. Uh, moving into the afternoon slate, of course, we got to watch Oregon and Washington. Oregon, Washington on the main screen, A and M and Tennessee on a second screen, and then my third screen. I think, I think that I might put, man, Troy at Army looks interesting to me. I might do that one. Or Florida at South Carolina. I'm interested to see how Florida bounces back after, you know, that wreck at Kentucky a couple weeks ago. South Carolina coming off of a bye week. That's that's going to be interesting. Uh, moving into the evening slate. So LSU-Auburn, I think, could be a bloodbath. I think, I think that could be ridiculous. Uh, so Georgia State-Marshall is going to be a lot of fun. That one's at 6 p.m. Central on ESPN2, of course, Central Time, God's Time Zone. Uh, Air Force Wyoming is going to be on one screen. Marshall Georgia State is going to be on one screen. And I'm going to have USC at Notre Dame on one of the screens. Uh, aside from that, you know, you get down here and you got Kentucky, Missouri. You got UCLA, Oregon State is on Fox. Uh, there's there's a lot of games. I'm going to be flipping around a lot. Like, I don't know what my main screen is going to be on because I don't really care about USC and Notre Dame. Like, I... I I think Air Force and Wyoming might be my main screen. <laughs> that that might be what I end up doing. Uh, UCLA at Oregon State, I think, is going to be fascinating at 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and then you've got your your late-night game on CBS Sports Network where San Diego State goes to Hawaii. Uh, Boise at Colorado State. Does Colorado State bounce back? We shall see about that. All right. Let's go on and, let's go on and do this right quick. Let me tell you about Ticket Smarter. That's right. Secondary ticket app, we get it. Ticketsmarter.com is where you need to go. If you're looking on going to any of these games, any of these big concerts that are being announced, I'm hearing rumors that ACDC might be on tour in 2024. We shall see. Uh, apparently the Power Trip uh, Festival went really well for them. I would pay a lot of money to go see ACDC again. I hadn't seen them since like 2009, and that was the only time I got to see them. But in, anyway, off my ACDC kick. Ticketsmarter.com or the Ticket Smarter app. Think smarter, Ticket Smarter. Use the promo codes WCE10 or WCE20. WCE10 is going to get you $10 off of an order of $100 or more, and you see it on the screen there. WCE20 gives you $20 off $300 or more, and these are not one-time use codes. Okay, I have been told that you can use these whenever you place an order. So if you want to go to multiple events, you just put in these codes, you're going to save money. Uh, that's a that's a win to me. So, ticket smarter, think smarter, ticket smarter. 
WCE10 or WCE20. Uh, let me know. Let me know when you use them because I, I want to know where you're going. I want to know what you're doing. I, uh, I would love to hear it. All right. I always do it every week. The most unlikely wins. So let's talk about it. What are the most unlikely wins from week number six? Only had four of them that were less than 50% winning percentage for a team that won the game outright. Georgia Tech, 11.42% post-game win expectancy against Miami. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, FAU had a 19.77% post-game win expectancy against Tulsa. They won the game by three. Old Dominion. 24.37% 24.37% post-game win expectancy against Southern Miss. That's wild. That's wild. And finally, this one I think might surprise some people. USC, 27.78% post-game win expectancy in a two-point overtime win over Arizona. Arizona? I mean, good gracious. Are we serious? So, yeah, just, just mayhem. Absolute mayhem on that one. All right, let's talk about some early games this week. I got some midweek games that we need to go over, so let's go ahead and do it. We'll start off with this one. Louisiana Tech heads to Middle Tennessee State. Middle Tennessee is a three-point home favorite. It's Tuesday, 6 p.m. Central Time on CBS Sports Network. Let's bring it up on the screen. I have got Louisiana Tech favored in this spot. The numbers love Louisiana Tech. The bookmakers love Middle Tennessee. They keep making them favorites. Even I understand that they are at home. The biggest thing to me, and here, let's pull it up on the main screen so you can see all of it. The five factors here. I mean, it is heavily skewed towards Louisiana Tech. Heavily skewed. Um, there's There's no real breakdown here. This pass defense for Louisiana Tech, they that's the strength of the Louisiana Tech defense. Happens to be the strength of the Middle Tennessee offense. Middle Tennessee can't run the ball. I don't know that they're even going to try. They've been throwing the ball like nearly 60% of the time. Uh, Louisiana Tech, when they are on offense, they can kind of run. They can kind of pass. Like they're number 29 in passing explosiveness, so that's something to pay attention to. Uh, if I had to go a certain way here, obviously... I am going to have to go with Louisiana Tech on this. So give me give me Louisiana Tech plus the three, uh, even though, boy, it, it, when you get into some of these games where it is just like, who is the worst team? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just tough. It, it's pretty tough to, uh, to pick a winner when it comes down to those. But I will take Louisiana Tech plus three on the road here. Moving along. Liberty heads to Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State is a six-point home underdog. This one is at uh, 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday night on ESPNU. We're going to pull that one up, too. I've got Liberty favored in the game, but not by six. Uh, The issue that I have is Liberty's defense, I think, is actually pretty good. Uh, as you see on the screen here, number 48 defensive PPA per drive. Now, Jacksonville State is number 20 in that spot. Jacksonville State is number 106 uh, PPA per drive on offense. That's predicted points added. That's a bit of an issue for me because I think that they're going to have trouble scoring with Liberty. Now, Liberty only put up 21 points on Sam Houston State last week. But, uh, let's pull it up so you can see the entire thing here. Uh, Again, You know, I love the five factors thing. Well, the five factors favor Liberty here. Uh, First half margin, Liberty gets off to way faster starts than Jacksonville State does. Uh, I think this game is at home for Jacksonville State. And Liberty is more explosive. As you see, net explosiveness here. They're number 60 in net explosiveness, while Jacksonville State's number 123. Uh, They're both pretty good in points per play margin, both really good in turnover margin. The... I guess the big advantage for Jacksonville State would be uh, penalties per game. Like, they are uh, a more disciplined team when it comes to, you know, uh, penalties or whatever. Um, Liberty, not great at points per scoring opportunities. So, while they do get a lot of opportunities, 
8.2 scoring opportunities per game. That means 8.2 drives per game get inside the opponent's 40-yard line. Uh, They're only number 107 in points per scoring opportunity. Jacksonville State, really good at defending that. Number 18 in points per scoring opportunity down there. That could be an issue. I think that Liberty wins the game. I think I'm going to take Jacksonville State to cover. I think that's what I'm going to do. I I will take Jacksonville State uh, to cover the game here. But, I mean, I don't feel great about this one because I feel like Jacksonville State's been living on borrowed time. Just a guess. Just a guess. All right. Continuing on because we got to keep these things rolling. Uh, What is our time? Yes. 25-41. 25-41. Hey, we're going we're gonna to get this in a touch over 30 minutes. Coastal Carolina heads to App State on Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. Why we have a standalone Sunbelt spot, I have no idea. It's not a standalone per se, but you get the point. It's one Sunbelt game. Um, App State is favored by five and a half. Five and a half here. Uh, I'm a little surprised by that. My power ratings have it almost even. And App State, per the numbers so far this season, should be favored by almost two. I, I've i not been impressed with App State. And maybe maybe you have. I don't know. Uh, you guys can tell me. But, like, Coastal Carolina is... I don't like their coaching hire. But I don't think that they're awful. Right? And I don't think that App State is the kind of team that can take advantage of them. What is surprising to me about this is App State over here, number 104 in defensive success rate allowed, number 87 defensive PPA per drive. You don't think Coastal is going to be able to find some holes in that defense? I mean, I just... uh, We're looking at App State number 40 in net explosiveness, number 51 for Coastal Carolina. I think there's going to be plays to be had here. Um... This is, App State's defense is terrible against the rush. Turns out that, you know, Coastal can't run the ball anyway. Uh, but Coastal is better at throwing the ball than, than App State is at defending it. I think there's going to be spots where Coastal can stay in this game. Uh, five factors rank, I mean, it's pretty even here. Like, it's, you know, when you toss in talent, App State is better. Uh, but just overall five factors, Coastal's better. So, I I look at it and... I think that this one's going to be pretty tight. Uh, App State, you can see this. Scoring opportunities per game. We talked about that with the last game. 8.5. 8.5 drives per game for App State get within the opponent's 40-yard line. They are only getting 3.15 points per scoring opportunity. So they are leaving teams in the game. Uh, That's number 112 points per scoring opportunity. Uh, Turns out Coastal pretty good at, you know, bend but don't break defense. Don't let teams into the end zone. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff will keep you in a game. So, I'll uh, I'll take Coastal. I'm going with midweek dogs, man. That this is maybe not ideal, but hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, give me Coastal plus five and a half on that one. All right, now headed over to Wednesday night, Wednesday eight p.m. Central Time. Sam Houston at New Mexico State. New Mexico State currently a four-point favorite here. Uh, this one is, yeah, 8 p.m. Central Time on CBS Sports Network on Wednesday night. And uh, and hey, let's pull up the uh, let's pull up the numbers here so you can see what we're looking at. So I got I got New Mexico State favored by a lot. Okay, now Sam Houston has picked things up here recently. Their offense has looked a little bit better. Overall numbers on the season though not great, right? This New Mexico State offense is, I mean, they're good. They're really good at running the ball. They're pretty good throwing the ball. The issue, of course, is uh, is turnovers, but they've they've kind of gotten better at that. At Sam Houston, I just, I cannot trust this offense. They have figured out a few things. That defense did shut down Liberty last week. So that is something to pay attention to. But New Mexico State, I think they're going to do something a little bit different here. I... I mean, look at these offensive numbers. I mean, it is just, it is awesome. Uh, number 39 PPA per pass. Number 48 passing success rate. Obviously, that's going into the teeth of the uh, the Sam Houston defense. But man, like these numbers rushing the ball for New Mexico State, 
Number six, PPA per rush. Number six, rushing success rate. Uh, yeah, when Sam Houston is number 74 PPA per rush allowed, that's kind of an issue. So I, you know, you, you can look at points per scoring opportunity and, and all these kind of things, but I tend to believe when you look at, you know, net explosiveness and all that, like this just screams for you to take New Mexico State to me. Uh, I don't know why the line is coming down, but I will gladly back the Aggies here. Uh, this is this Sam Houston team has got problems. I mean, they just they and they they've been getting a little bit better. They played to within five of Liberty. I think some of that was uh, self inflicted mistakes. But even my power ratings have New Mexico State by more. So I'm I am of the belief that New Mexico State is going to be able to cover uh, cover this game at home. And so give me give me New Mexico State minus the four. Uh, that is the way that I'm going to roll there. Let's uh, let's hit two more on Thursday night, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, West Virginia and Houston. And here, let's write the time down. I right, cut it correctly. West Virginia heads to Houston Thursday night, 6 p.m. Central Time on FS1. Houston currently, excuse me, a two-and-a-half-point home underdog. And what a ball game this is. The Dana Holgerson Bowl. Right? You don't think Dana's going to have some stuff drawn up here? I mean, it, it's going to be a fantastic ball game. Um, West Virginia has been really good this year. And let's pull it up on the screen. Look at that. Number 14 strength of record. Yeah, that's all right. Look at that defense. Number 22 PPA per pass. Number 2 in passing success rate allowed. Number 17 PPA per rush allowed. Like, these, these explosiveness numbers are great. They're not good on offense, but they're great at defending big plays. So I'm all about that. Uh, they're really good, you know, penalties per game. Uh, West Virginia doesn't turn the ball over. And uh, you've got the five factors that are just screaming for you to take West Virginia here. The issue is it's a weeknight road game. And I I feel like this line should be higher. And there's, there's a lot of it. The spot certainly screams Houston because you know that Dana Holgerson has something cooked up here. But I, at under two and a half, uh, West Virginia has played so well all year. All year. And yet, I am still thinking about taking Houston here. Um, here's, okay, so here's the issue. Houston, uh, West Virginia's offense, number 21 in stuff rate allowed. Houston's defense does not stop the rush. Uh, that is going to be a massive strength for West Virginia. I think... I think I'm going to take Houston. Nope, I'm not. Nope, I flipped it on the air. <laughs> you guys can tell I'm going through it. I am going through it right now. Uh, give me West Virginia to cover the two and a half on the road. I know that that's ridiculous, but... And I know that there's all these narratives and all this kind of stuff. And I know that Dana's going to have some stuff drawn up. I get that. But, uh, man, West Virginia's played so well. I don't think that just because they're going to their former coach. And it's been years. Nobody on this West Virginia team played for Dana Holgerson, I don't believe. So, yeah, I, that's that's the way I got to go. I got to go West Virginia. They are the, they've been the better team all year. There is no reason for them to go in here and, and lose this game. Um I'm going to take them by two and a half. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So, West Virginia minus two and a half on that one. All right. Finally, let's do this. SMU heads to East Carolina. SMU, an 11-point road favorite here. It's Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, Central time. God's time zone. Central time. On ESPN. Of course, the mouse. As you can see on my hat here. Um, let's pull up the numbers. Let's take a look. Look, SMU, surprisingly, better on defense than they are on offense. Uh, number 33, PPA per drive on defense. Number 43 on offense. The passing numbers have gotten a little bit better for SMU. But not like, they're not great, right? They're not explosive. Um, they're better running the ball, <laughs> which is just not what I would have, I did not expect that at all. Uh, five factors rank certainly favors SMU. I mean, there's a reason why they're, you know, 
a double-digit favorite here. Uh, they're really good running the ball. The issue is that East Carolina is pretty good at stopping the run. Number 16 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, they are number 27 in stuff rate. Yeah, there's there's ways that they can keep this thing close. My numbers like SMU, minus 13. Uh, but again, you know, weeknight, road, uh, our home underdog situation, East Carolina, I think their their defense has been keeping them in games. Their offense has just been bad. I mean, bad, bad. Uh, but I think that they're getting better. I think they're getting better. So my number says SMU minus 13. I am going to... I'm going to roll East Carolina here as a home dog. I like East Carolina. Um, and the only, there's not a real reason for that other than, you know, I think that they can maybe get some uh, some breaks. Uh, they're not great at scoring points in the red zone, obviously, or for scoring opportunity. They're number 130 in points per scoring opportunity. But they're number 16 in scoring opportunities per game. Well, this SMU defense is number 88 at points per uh, scoring opportunity allowed. Yeah, the, the East Carolina offense has not been good, but I think they're getting better. So, that's the that's the way that I'm going to ride on that one. Give me... These dogs are crazy. Crazy. Uh, give me East Carolina plus 11 on that one. All right. I think that's going to do it for today. Buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures is where you can support the show. Uh, Three Dog Thursday coming up on Thursday. Don't forget, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we are going to have, of course, the Bet U.S. College Football Show, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. All right. That's going to wrap it up. Subscribe to the show if you haven't already. Like the video. All those wonderful things. Uh, but that's it. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And uh, God bless college football, of course. And hopefully, hopefully, all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.